This is my Form 3 Plus, and this is the workstation that it lives on. Right here, I need some sort of a cleanable work surface. So I'm going to make a mold, and we're going to pour a custom silicone work mat. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So it all just ends up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Get an Alfred backpack hanger today. Did you know this episode's sponsor, PCBWay, offers injection molding services, including plastic molding, liquid silicone rubber, as well as insert and over molding. They offer a wide range of plastic materials from hard to soft and flexible varieties. Additionally, they offer a wide range of SPI mold surface finishes as well. Check them out for your next project. Link in the description below. CAD, I've built up what the work mat should look like. It's 280 by 410 millimeters, so almost 11 by 17 inches, and it's very specific to my work size. And then this will also allow me to have data from this CAD so that I can laser cut the parts. That's right, laser cut the parts. A lot of times when you watch me make parts, I'm making a master and then I'm making a silicone mold to make resin parts. But in this case, we're actually making a silicone part. So we're going to make a mold out of acrylic that is rigid. Uh, and that way it's reusable and we can make as many of these as we want. The laser is very precise and allows me to cut out the various parts that we're going to stack on top of each other to make the mold out of these acrylic sheet parts. If you've never laser cut anything before, the CO2 lasers are really, really good at cutting acrylic. So this is a ideal material. I'm going to add some graphics and we're just going to fill that. So it's going to be a very fine etch that goes into here. And of course it's etched in backwards or upside down so that when the part is molded, you can actually see the text correctly. It's time to assemble the parts. You could see the three pieces right there and how they go together. So acrylic usually comes with some sort of protective coating on it to protect the surface so it doesn't get scratched. And I do want this mat to be shiny. I'm putting on some acrylic cement and cement is almost not the right word. It is a solvent. It melts the acrylic and this is what bonds the two pieces of acrylic together really, really well. So you don't want to use super glue or something like that here. You want to use a acrylic solvent to bond your stuff. Now I have this piece that goes in the middle and I want to put a radius on this and it's only an eighth of an inch thick. And the material is not thick enough for me to run my router bit along the edge to radius it. So I need to bond it to a piece of MDF so that I can have enough thickness and use my router to radius the edge of the acrylic. And I use this nice DeWalt router here. My bit is not quite correct and there's just not enough meat really um, to line things up and I screw up a little bit in the corners. So I put a little bit of body filler here and I'm coming back and I'm fixing it by hand. So now I can come back and I can radius that top edge, which ultimately is the inside bottom edge of the mat. And I use this little DeWalt router link in the description is fantastic battery powered tool. Amazing. Now I have to take the 
MDF off of the acrylic that I put on with the double-sided sticky tape. And I use a little bit of solvent to soften up the tape so that I can take the two pieces apart. I'm gonna put some blue painter's tape on the good surface here. And this is just to protect the surface while I work on the other side so I don't scratch it up. The tape actually comes off pretty easy and we'll pull off the backing there as well, the protective backing. And now it's time to put this together and I put some solvent on there and I have little spacers and this allows me to get the correct spacing to place that piece in the middle. You can see the graphics there, it all gets lined up and let's clean it with some Windex, get it nice and glossy, clean up any sort of residue that's left and get it ready to cast our first part. I'm gonna use some Platinum Cure 5150 from BJB here. And so I'm just measuring out the amount that I need and I'm putting in some colorant. This is actually a Romf colorant and I want to make this thing orange. So I'll put in a bunch of yellow and then just a tiny bit of red so I can get my orange color and I'm pretty happy with this sort of orange industrial kind of color. We'll add the other half of the platinum silicone in here to finish our mixture and get the right amount so we can pour it into the mold. Just like with any other silicone, once it's mixed up really well, we're gonna put it into the vacuum chamber. We wanna degas the silicone so that we can get all the air bubbles out of the mixture so that when it goes into the mold, we don't have any trapped air bubbles on the inside of the part. Now, I notice here, but it doesn't really click in with me that the silicone is acting a little bit weird. Basically the bubbles are never going away. And I don't think too much of it and I just sort of carry on, but I can't really get the bubbles to go away and it seems really thick, but I still haven't put two and two together about what's going on. So at this point, I take it out of the chamber and it's been somewhat degassed or it looks like it. And the silicone is really thick. And it's at this point that I'm like, oh, something's not right here. It's way too thick. Silicone doesn't set up this fast. And what's happened here is that the pigment that I used reacted with the platinum silicone and has caused it to cure very quickly. And that's a problem, and it's not going to work. One of the inherent dangers of using platinum silicone is that it reacts weird. And so in this case, I'm going to mix up a new batch and I'm going to actually use a silicone colorant that's specifically formulated for silicones. And so we don't have that issue that we had before. And I'm a little disappointed. Those are smooth on pigments, just not what I was hoping for. It's going to give me a candy. Uh, basically some translucency and everything. I wasn't going for that. It's kind of cool look and everything, but that's, that's not what I wanted. So you can see here, the silicone is degassing correctly. It, the bubbles are going away and reducing significantly. And I can pour this out and you can see how it flows out basically the way silicone is supposed to flow out. And you can also see on the right here, I have my dental vibration tool going on. So I'm having vibration go through the table and into the part to reduce the air bubbles or basically get the air bubbles to come to the surface. And then I place my glass on the top. And this allows me to have a nice flat surface on the back side of the part, which of course you want since it's going to be laying on a table and you want that to be nice and flat 
and you don't get any um, curled edges in the corners or anything like that and this gives you more of a production part so it's nice and flat and looks like a nice piece so it's curing it does so overnight and in the morning we'll remove the weights you can see some of the silicone has kind of flowed out a little bit now the tricky part here is just to be really careful it's an acrylic part uh, it could break you want to take your time to release that from the glass and the silicone so that you don't break the mold and so that you can reuse it and here's the part it comes out this nice kind of cool candy look again not what i was going for but it does yield a very nice uh, work mat and i'm pretty pleased with the results and the quality that i'm getting from this very simple mold and just putting the glass on the back so you get a nice surface on the front and the back of the part it's silicone so you can roll it up and store it put it wherever you want and we'll put it on my work cart where it's supposed to go and it's a great fit it's the right size of course i made it to the size that i need for my work surface so this is going to be great for taking resin prints that come out of the ipa um, cleaning solution and i can pop them onto this work surface along with my scraper tool and have some isopropyl here and just clean things up and so that everything is contained inside of this work surface it's easily cleanable it's not affected by the alcohol or any of the resin or anything like that it's not going to mess anything up like it would get messed up with the painted surface of the work cart and this is just really what i need to process my parts I want to make one more that's opaque and we're going to use a tin cure silicone for this and this is silicone inks 10 uh, gi 1040 and i've added a little bit of additional blue in here again we use vibration get all that extra silicone to flow out and we'll make a mat that is a little bit more opaque very gently get that acrylic mold to separate from the silicone and you get this really nice silicone mat and I'm very pleased you can hear that static release off the glass there you get a really nice silicone mat so I like this I'm gonna make these I suspect there are people watching this video that might want a silicone mat like this and I can make these. There'll be a link in the description to the Botson website where you can go and purchase these. They will be made to order. So as the orders come in, I will make them. It will take a few days to make before they get shipped out to you. And you can have one if you would like. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.